So in today's video, we're going to transform that space into this. In just a few hours time, we're going to share with you exactly how you do it from the dirt, to the screws, to the boards, to the cuts, everything. And also we're going to share with you how to start your own organic raspberry garden. Raspberries are so delicious. Oftentimes the store-bought raspberries are sprayed with chemicals or not organic, so you can grow them yourself. They couldn't be easier to grow. We're going to share with you how to do that in this video. So stay tuned and here's how you get started. We got our measurements. We got our measurements. Got our measurements. Right. All right. So as we go to the hardware store, one thing I want to point out is it's great to support a small local hardware store in your area. I know Home Depot has a lot of supply, but you can usually get better deals at one of these small outfits and they're gonna actually help you and, and offer you solutions. Plus, they generally have these farmer bundles in the back that are discounted and on sale. You don't need the most perfect clear heart cedar that's very expensive. You just need something that's gonna hold dirt, that's gonna be exposed to the elements. So I recommend seeing what they have on sale. You can also get copper azol treated wood as well. A lot of people get spooked on pressure treated wood. They don't use arsenic anymore. It's a copper azol. I would be happy to put that as my garden bed what we got here was a discounted uh, juniper and that has some essential oils to prevent rotting it's also a, a tree that's grown here in the northwest i like these kind of the hex head is a little bit better it's harder to strip so we're going to load this up in the truck So we're getting a wheelbarrow here. This is all donation based. Isn't this place cool? It's really hard. Hey, your local neighborhood tool library. Nice. Where it's at, guys. That's where it goes down. <laughs> Treats, <laughs> organic bell pepper. It's just um, groceries from what I got earlier, but this will have to do for now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he has a turkey loaf. Our turkey loaf. Look at him looking at the wrapper. Now, as you saw, Seattle does have this local tool library. You don't need a lot of tools. What Chris is using here is a table saw. You can just use a handsaw. Uh, but basically, what I wanted to let you know about these cuts. So basically, um, we're making a rectangular box. Couldn't be simpler. There's going to be these small little two by fours in the middle as the braces to where the ends will meet. You just put two screws on each side and we're going to have a three foot cap to it, which would go on kind of the north and south sides. And then on the horizontal east west sides, if you will, are going to be these two by four by six and a half foot. You don't need much more reinforcement than that. You don't need to build these up. The dirt's going to hold itself compacted in there. So that's just one thing they need to understand. Now, you want to get really good organic soil. This is a place here in Washington. Keep it simple farms that I go to. I recommend it. Uh, Chris get this so I loaded up some soil for him we got about a half a yard and that was sufficient to fill the beds well we forgot to get some hardware cloth at Dun Lumber so I'm at uh, Ace Hardware here I'm gonna run in there get some hardware cloth it's around a hundred hundred twenty dollars you know it is a good idea to put this in there gophers and things like that can still figure out how to get in your garden beds but this deters them a little bit the rats and things like that so uh, we're gonna go get some of that and then we're gonna go cut some wood all right, almost done here for the day. So got the three beds in as you've already seen. But one thing that we did different that I wanted to point out is the wire mesh that you saw in the video. So put it underneath there. Chris stapled it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as you saw from the video, what we did is we mixed some of the just, you know, regular soil here with wood chips that we had. So I'll zoom in there. Recently, he felled some trees in his yard. So chips can be used to backfill some of the soil or put some things on the bottom. You know, because the root system of your of your vegetables, whatever you're growing, it's not going four feet into the ground. It's going maybe a foot. So if you want to backfill it with junky soil so you're not breaking the bank on soil, that's an option for you as well. So just keep that in mind. And so we, we backfilled some yucky dirt, put some chips on the ground in there, and then loaded up the organic soil on top of that as a way to kind of make our dollar stretch a little bit further because the organic soil with compost and rock can be expensive. So um, just keep that in mind. But soil is something where you want to spend some good money to make sure all the inputs were organic. There's some compost, some rock in there. But if you have a neighbor or if you have someone that has wood chips, most tree arborists and things like that will give you wood chips for free. They'll just they'll come dump it at your house if you call one of them because they're trying to get rid of it. Now, you can put them 
on the ground, on, on top of your beds once you start planting. Uh, I've found a lot of success putting wood chips down when I'm growing the raspberries because the raspberries just it's, it keeps the heat in. It, it makes the soil a little bit warmer. Uh, so they get a nice start when the sun starts coming out in the spring. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, as well. So wood chips are your friend. Obviously, you want to make sure when you get the wood chips that they're from a source of spraying a bunch of chemicals and pesticides and things of the sort. So the mesh, uh, two layers of it. And the purpose of that is he's going to put raspberries in here and this will hopefully slow them down just a little bit. And uh, these beds are done. So yeah, we started around 1230-ish. So three beds are about six and a half, what, six and a half feet? Yeah. Six and a half feet long three and some change so this is perfect i mean you can get two rows or maybe three rows of, of veggies on each um and so these might be like more swiss chard spinach arugula kale type stuff and then you know maybe it's a little bit more direct sun over here so raspberries tomatoes you know things that just thrive on a lot of heat a lot of sun so lesson learned here mesh is good that can help you kind of do it right the first time you know be crafty look at all that soil Got to, got to deal with over there. So it was a lot of work. So last of the dirt is going in. So we got it ran a little short on dirt. So we had to commandeer some dirt from the beds, which were overfilled and there's still plenty of room there. Uh, but now basically we have a fourth four by 12 or so bed. And like we mentioned, uh, raspberries are going in here. So I pulled these, actually they got into my neighbor's yard. He wasn't super thrilled about it. And I pulled them this morning. And so, I don't know, maybe 25, 30, raspberry shoots we're going to plant them here and i'll be super excited when this summer there's raspberries all over this which would be really cool they're super easy so basically there are these runners and you just plant them and, and they're going to look wilted and yucky but give them water and love and they're going to come back around so friends i really hope you enjoyed that video if you want to learn more about backyard gardening backyard chickens raising bees berries and everything like that definitely check out backyard garden school i co-created this with our show notes extraordinaire nancy carpenter she's an amazing person lifelong gardener and farmer i think you really get a lot of value out this i'll put links below and i would love to see you on the other side our students are really pleased with the courses and all the information that's laid out there so thanks as always for tuning in We'll catch you on a future episode down the road.